I've never been in a situation where I felt like I was trapped in a metal tube 20,000 feet above the air with no one that could actually help me. I'm Sarah and I'm 19, currently about to go into my second year of uni. And this story is about um, me almost dying on a plane from a severe nut allergy reaction. This happened when I was in year 10 at school, which was 2016. And I went on holiday with my best friend Izzy and her parents, Sarah and Lloyd. Mm -hmm. And we went to Florida. A couple of months before the flight, Izzy's mum had surgery on her knee. So she had to call up the airline to sort out a wheelchair for her on both ends in the airport so she didn't have to hobble about. So when she rang them to talk about her getting a wheelchair, she also spoke to them about me having a nut allergy because obviously it was like a 10 hour flight. So we were going to have to eat something on the plane. Um, so she spoke to them to order me a nut-free meal. I'm very allergic to nuts, but it's not the kind of severe nut allergy where if someone a metre away from me opened a packet of peanuts, my throat would close up and I'd die on the spot. I have to actually eat the nut to have a reaction. But the ones that I'm more severely allergic to, it does only take a little bit for me to have a possibly deadly reaction. So we go to go on our holiday and Izzy's parents were so 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 good way better than my mum's ever been about being attentive and careful in terms of booking me a nut free meal because I was underage I was only 16 I think so they were very very cautious and were like we're gonna make sure everything's nut free and they were so good when we get to the airport in London they're ready when we check in we're like oh yeah you're on our special assistance list you need a wheelchair so obviously that had all gone through fine they knew what was going on we were flying in business class which I've never been in before and it was on the second floor of the plane so we went upstairs don't think I'd ever been on a double decker plane before so it was all very exciting and then we'd had the first meal which would have been lunch and then now it was probably seven hours into the flight and I was watching a film and Izzy gets really bad flight sickness so she was having a little bit of a mare so I swapped seats with her dad just so Izzy could be next to her mum while she was having a little vomit and a cry because she felt rubbish and I was watching my film so then it was like afternoon tea time so um they brought round teas and coffees, but they had little like finger sandwiches, a little kind of cream cake scone thing, and then this little chocolate brownie. Now, I've been on a flight for seven hours without eating any chocolate, so that's the first thing I went for. <laughs> I had a bite out of this little chocolate brownie thing, and it was literally like a square inch. It wasn't big, and I just had a bite, so I probably had about half of it. And immediately felt my tongue was itching which is the first thing that happens when I know I've had a nut so Izzy was sat behind me vomiting with her mum and I just sat there like retro when am I gonna tell them I think I'm eating a nut so I turned around just like Sarah I think what I ate might have maybe just had like a trace of nut in or something so I'm just gonna get my allergy tablets out and have a couple and we'll see where it goes so she was like oh my goodness and immediately gets up and goes over to their hostesses and says what was in the little afternoon tea pack that everybody got. And then they went off and had a look in whatever book has the ingredients in. And it turned out it had pistachios and hazelnuts in. So at this point, Izzy is shoved to the side. No one cares about your travel sickness anymore. And it was <laughs> all eyes on me as the reaction developed and my... Tongue and lips got much more itchy and swollen. I started to get hives on my body, little rashes all over. And I started to feel sick. I just, I've had a couple of reactions in the past and I just always know when it's happening and the feeling that I get. And I can generally tell whether or not it's gonna be just a, oh, have some algae tablets and go over it, or it's gonna be a, oh, have an EpiPen, you might die. And this was definitely a you might die situation. So I get out my EpiPen ready and when I've kind of 
definitely assured myself, yeah, this is a, I might die, I needed my EpiPen. I self-administered that, jabbing it in my outer thigh, done it before, it's not very pleasant, but you gotta do what you gotta do. My throat is starting to get itchier and more tight, so just generally very uncomfortable, unhappy, starting to feel a bit panicky, as you would when you're about to die, possibly. So all this is going on and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, it's the very start of the holiday. I feel so, so bad. I just felt so guilty that I'd eaten the stupid brownie. And if I didn't, you know, it was just such an awkward situation to be in with your friend's parents. You didn't want to ruin the holiday. But while we were stressed... By yeah, by <laughs> dying. <laughs> um, so while, while everything started to get a bit stressful, the air hostesses that my friend's mum had asked, does this have nuts in, came over with a clipboard and a form and was like, can you just sign this please to Izzy's parents? And they were like, what is it? And they were like, oh, it's just a, just a little form, just a little form, just, just, just to say that it's not our fault that she might die because it's not our fault. And luckily Izzy's dad Lloyd used to be an injury lawyer. So he was like, no, we are not signing that. Go away immediately. It is your fault. I remember at the beginning of the flight, there was a girl who was a couple of years younger than me with her parents who was sat next to us along the aisle and they'd said, oh, she's got an allergy. And they were like, yeah, we've got all the allergens on the system. We, and we know where your seats are. Like it flashes up a different colour when we have to give you an allergen meal. So when we heard them say that to the big group, we were like, cool, that's how they do it. Awesome. Um, so we said, well, we knew we were on your system as a net free meal. Why did you give them this? And the only answer they had was they obviously didn't check it before giving out the meal. So and, and you hadn't checked when they handed you? No, because everything else had run so smoothly with uh, getting the wheelchair at the beginning, with the girl next to us having the nut-free meal, with my first lunch coming and being nut-free. We just assumed it would carry on being fine. And then I start to violently vomit sat in the chair, people dotted about, all the air hostesses have come to gawk and the poor families around us are all like, well, what's going on over there? And I am violently projectile vomiting. I genuinely feel, I think it was something like 13 of these little paper bags. And obviously vomiting on myself as well because when you're projectile vomiting, you can't always aim into the bag. So I was not having a good time. I'd also, I'd used the EpiPen, so I was kind of hoping it would start to get better in some way. But it wasn't. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes the reaction is so severe or you go into secondary reaction where um, the EpiPen just isn't enough, basically. But you shouldn't administer more than one EpiPen yourself because you're basically giving yourself pure adrenaline. So if you give yourself above the um, required dosage and you go too much, then you could go into cardiac arrest. My tongue and lips were super, super itchy and swollen and it was just not a nice feeling. And it was getting more and more difficult to swallow with my throat getting itchy and closing up. And then when I was saying, obviously my breathing is getting more difficult because my throat was closing up, the air hostess is so helpfully offered an oxygen tank because obviously there's lots of oxygen on planes for those disasters. So they brought me over a little portable oxygen tank with a mask attached to it. And when my vomiting had subsided, I sat and was breathing through that, which in a way made me feel a little bit better because it was just, it did feel a bit more like pure air was getting into me and I wasn't kind of staggering my breathing as much. So that was nice. Um, and then all this had been going on and then ding dong, we're gonna be starting our descent soon. So I have to sit down, put your seatbelt on and the air hostesses come over and say, well, because we're starting a descent, make sure everybody's bags are tucked under the seat or into the overhead carrier. Also, you can't have any loose items. They always say that. But they also come over and say, right, we're going to have to take the oxygen tank off you because that's a loose item. So we're going to have to just take that. So I was like, mm, please do not take the oxygen away. But I couldn't really argue with them. But obviously their argument is if we hit some crazy turbulence and the oxygen tank flies up and hits me on the head, then they'd be held accountable for that. But you know, the current situation of me suffocating, I felt, was a bigger deal, but they didn't see it the same way. <laughs> so they took the oxygen tank off me. So as we start the descent, my nose blocks up, so I can't breathe through my nose anymore. And then obviously my throat is closing up because I've had a reaction and the oxygen's been taking off me. So I'm just sat, probably still half vomiting every now and then with my throat and my nose blocked up, literally just sitting there making these horrible wheezy, bubbly, gurgly 
death noises while my poor best friend and her parents are sat around me while I just focus on pretty much staying conscious and carrying on breathing. Um, and then pretty quickly the um, top floor had been cleared so the paramedic could come up. So up come the American paramedics. Now if you know about how American Health Service works, paramedics are actually the same as firemen and the <laughs> for some reason little old me got literally eight firemen come and there were these there was one female fireman and seven male firemen who were wearing these blue tight t-shirts and they all came running up the plane and ran to me and carried me off and <laughs> took me off the plane and I think I might have kind of passed out a little bit because I don't fully remember being I mean, it might have just been the flustering of the firemen, but I don't fully remember being carried off the plane. Um, so got out and then transferred me onto a stretcher. And then they um, said, we're going to give you a very strong antihistamine, um, give me that intravenously. So they start... I've always been such a bitch to cannulate, no one can ever find a vein. But after a, a lot of time and a lot of discomfort and a lot of coughing and spluttering and... <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm getting too much about the needles. Eventually, they got me cannulated and started to put this basically like a super strong version of Benadryl um, in. And literally one second after they started to insert the drug, I could taste it. It was just injected into my arm, into my bloodstream, but I could, it was like I just had a mouthful of medicine. So I was sort of like, swallowing like I was tasting something and as I was doing that I could literally feel my throat open up my airways completely relax and things just feel a lot lot better and once they kind of got me stable and they were like okay she's not in a critical condition right now and then we got out the back door of the airport and met the ambulance and then we set off for the hospital so we had to stay in hospital for a couple hours. I remember one of the nurses came in and said to Sarah, um, do you have your insurance details? Because obviously he knew we weren't American. So yeah, they did ask um, for the insurance details so we could pay. And obviously we said, well, I'm not actually her daughter. It's gonna be my mum's details when we can get them. And I also remember them saying it would be a separate um, medical bill for the ambulance service and the actual service of them coming and driving me but also for the drugs that they gave me so we were like shit then that's going to be expensive um but obviously you're not really thinking about that you're just thinking well thank god I actually did get some medical treatment because I'm alive yes yeah, so we rang mum and told her that I was alive and they weren't upset and angry they were just a bit like oh my goodness I can't believe that's happened and <laughs> were they more upset than the bill kids well yeah so then so then I think Sarah spoke to mum on the phone to be like can you please send us over your insurance details travel insurance health insurance situation so mum was left to talk to her insurance and unfortunately when you've just got a child covered on your own health and travel insurance um if they have something like asthma or a severe nut allergy it doesn't cover you for those things because it would be too expensive so um it turned out mum did have to pay not the full amount. I think it would, would have been £5,000, I think, maybe, for the hospital bill in total, and then a further £3,000 for the ambulance and other drugs, because they gave me some crazy drugs from the ambulance. But instead, it was... I think Mum had to pay £1,500 to the hospital, and around the same, maybe a bit less, for the ambulance. With, like with the Yeah, with the insurance kind of helping out and doing some of the payment and work I guess but in the end we got the offer from Virgin to repay the hospital bill so mum got the exact amount whatever it was that she paid completely paid off refunded so it wasn't like she had to pay hospital bills and then also £2,000 in compensation directly to me for any trauma upset and grievance that I was caused what's the moral of the story moral of the story 
fuck Virgin. <laughs> oh yeah, fuck Richard Branson. Personal grudge <laughs> against <laughs> Richard Branson because he claimed he had a nut-free airline and it was a lie. Couldn't, wouldn't it maybe be like, you know, <laughs> she wants a better moral yeah, story. Yeah, I want a better moral story. Okay, better moral story. Moral story, don't trust that people are going to do their job right because they <laughs> might not. Just always double check they're not feeding you something poisonous. <laughs> But we drove back and I just went and got straight into bed and slept for like 12 hours. And then when I woke up, they'd bought a roast chicken and I ate that. <laughs> Without nuts on. Yeah, there's no nuts on that. Um, and then we just got on and had a lovely holiday. Did you, did you have a nice holiday? Yeah, it was great. Day? Really? Well, yeah, because we left two weeks after the first day and got over it. For more stories like this, subscribe or go to storiesforcigarettes.co.uk. You've been listening to Stories for Cigarettes.